Hello and welcome to the Raw Review here on Wrestling With Regret. It's the first episode of Raw after Survivor Series in which the Red Show got trounced by both NXT and SmackDown. So let's see how the fallout begins. We actually open up with a Seth Rollins hosted town hall where the whole roster surrounds the ring and he basically passes the buck on everyone else and says, you suck, you suck, you suck. You all suck. You are all the reason that we lost on Survivor Series night. Uh, everyone starts to leave uh, out of frustration. Orton's doing the jerk-off motion as he leaves. Charlotte leaves. AOP leaves. Everybody leaves. Only Kevin Owens is left on the apron, and Rollins tries to explain his rationale. He's just trying to, to, to psych everyone up and motivate them for the, for the good of the show. It's all he's wanted is to be there to help Raw be the best it can be. He calls Kevin a uh, lazy piece of crap, says he'll never be Seth Rollins. Kevin says nothing throughout all this, but he does hit Seth with the stunner uh, to end the segment there. Then after the commercial break, Rollins challenges Kevin Owens to a match later in the night. And if this whole thing is not the beginning of a Seth Rollins heel turn, I don't know what is. It seems like after the last several months, I think the, the public perception of Seth, uh, whether it be his matches or his, his, the way he's been booked or how he acts on social media, it's finally kind of the tide has turned for him uh, this past several months. And so it seems they're, really, they're, they're starting to embrace that now. And they say, you know what? Let's turn that into a gimmick. And I think it's a really smart thing to do that now Rollins is is kind of this like he's this delusional heel who really believes he is in the right that's the mark of a great heel is when they believe that everything they do is for the greater good and that they are 100 right and that's what i think that's so perfect about rollins's role right now he's always been monday night rollins he's always been a raw 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 kind of guy r-a-h r-a-h R-A-W kind of guy, if that makes any sense. <laughs> I'm tired. It's, it's late at night. Anyway, so that that kind of transition into that kind of character, I think that really works for him, and I want to see where they go with that. First match of the night sees Bobby Lashley taking on Titus O'Neil. We see a clip of what happened earlier in the day when Rusev was served with a restraining order, which keeps him out of the All-State Arena on this night. Uh, the match itself doesn't go very far until Rusev shows up, storms the ring, and beats up Lashley. They make their way up to the stage area when the cops finally show up and cuff Rusev. Rusev. While he's handcuffed, though, Rusev is able to check Lashley off the stage and then later kick a piece of, like, the set, this big truss, down onto Lashley. Man, Lashley has the worst luck being hit with big environmental attacks this year. So in the aftermath, Lana looks very sad. Jerry Lawler on commentary condemns Rusev for his actions and feels very sympathetic toward Lana. And it finally dawned on me that, oh my god, Jerry Lawler's a heel announcer again. Like, I feel for the last several weeks, he's been kind of, like, playing both sides. Like, he'll be the voice of reason at times, but then he'll, he'll take a dig at someone when he has to. I feel this is the first time in a long time where he's really leaned into the heel aspect of that role 100% of the show, or at least for like 90% of it. Uh, I still think like, he lacks a lot of the venom of the Lawler of old, but you can definitely tell he's playing a heel announcer in this case here, and I like that. I like the fact that it's not just face and other face dynamic on the commentary team. Uh, we'll see how that long that lasts, but I like this kind of shift in Lawler's attitude on commentary. After weeks of well-dressed promos, AOP finds finally make their in-ring return to Raw, beating Kurt Hawkins and Zack Ryder in pretty short fashion, so they're there, and then off they go. We then get another squash match between Andrade and Akira Tozawa. It's a pity that for as good as Andrade is and for as often as they showcase him, he's like not been in a real like feud or program or angle for what feels like forever. Whether it be for a title or not, I'd like to see him in some kind of like storyline he can sink his teeth into. And of course, you can't have a segment involving Zelina Vega without a promo by Aleister Black immediately following where he calls out Buddy Murphy. Speaking of Buddy Murphy, he's not fighting Aleister Black yet. He's actually fighting a returning Matt Hardy. We haven't seen him in several months ever since Jeff hurt his knee and the Hardy Boys reunion was derailed. So Matt's back wearing the cargo pants, the tight t-shirt, looking in great shape. Uh, this is actually the longest match of the night so far. In a match full of squashes, this is a little more, you know, back and forth, but ultimately Buddy wins after a couple of consecutive knees to the face of Matt Hardy. After that match, though, Buddy gets on the microphone, calls out Aleister Black and Black shows up. They have a bit of a scuffle. Alistair uh, takes out Buddy and Buddy retreats. And that's pretty much where it ends. It's just crazy to think like, yeah, God, earlier this year, we couldn't stop seeing Alistair Black on TV. Like, he and Ricochet were a tag team and they were on like Raw and SmackDown, both shows every single week. And then it just stopped. And now Alistair Black has done like nothing except, you know, cut the, the dark brooding promos, have occasional matches. Maybe like I can count on less, on like one hand, less than one hand, the number of like TV matches he's had since the, he and Ricochet broke up as a team. It's just like crazy what the end game with, he, with, with Alistair is. Who knows? 
AJ Styles is set to defend the US Championship against Umberto Carrillo, but as Umberto makes his way out of the ring, he's jumped from behind by Gallows and Anderson. They destroy him on a set of steel stairs, and the OC feel pretty darn good about what just happened. Ricochet comes out to help his fallen friend. He challenges AJ to a match for the title right then and there, but AJ balks. Out come uh, Randy Orton, Drew McIntyre, and Rey Mysterio, and they all want a shot at the US Championship. I guess it's that time of year where since uh, Brock Lesnar's not going to be on TV for a while, the mid-card championship is the de facto top belt on Raw. So anyway, AJ says no to all these guys. Ricochet pitches, hey, what if we all have a fatal four-way to see who faces AJ for the title later tonight? Even Gals and Anderson think it's a great idea. It's a pretty darn good matchup between these guys here, despite the occasional interference from the OC. Ultimately, Mysterio rolls up Ricochet to win the match, and he's, he's going to face AJ for the title right then and there. They mentioned on commentary that Ricochet wants to regain the US Championship, and when I heard that, I just, I, my eyes just glazed over. I mean, can you remember when Ricochet was the US Champion this year? I barely can. Gallows and Anderson try to meddle some more, but they're ejected before the commercial break. Ultimately, Ray hits a 6-1-9. AJ bumps into the referee. We get a ref bump. Out come the OC yet again, but out comes Randy Orton, who actually helps Ray Mysterio, which, given their history together, I'm like, Hmm, very interesting choice. So we get a 619 into an RKO. Uh, Ray pins AJ and wins the US Championship. So it was a really good match, and it was a great for Ray to bounce back after his loss to Lesnar at Survivor Series. It's really cool because the you know, last time he won the US title, he had to drop it immediately because he was hurt. So I'm, I'm very hopeful. I think we should all be very hopeful that he does not get the injury bug again and can actually have a lengthy, healthy reign with the US Championship this time. He is celebrating with Dominic in, in the ring, by the way, which is a nice touch. We then go to a backstage promo by Kevin Owens where he says he's always known who he's been ever since he first laced up a pair of boots 20 years ago. Meanwhile, Seth Rollins always tries to be what he thinks others want him to be and it's made him a miserable, insufferable prick. And he says tonight he will turn Monday Night Rollins into the Kevin Owens show. Great promo. The rivalry renewed between Charlotte Flair and Asuka. These two are having a singles match here. It's a follow-up to what happened on Sunday at Survivor Series when Asuka sprayed the green mist into Charlotte's face as they were having some dissension on TV. Raw. Early in the match, Kyrie Sane is literally chased out of the arena by Charlotte before commercial break. And these two have some great chemistry together, some great work here between Charlotte and Asuka. Ultimately, Kyrie comes back to ringside in the distraction. Uh, Asuka releases all the mist, the most mist in Charlotte's face. It was an excessive amount. Like I've complained in the past about, oh, I think she shouldn't rely on that every week. Oh man, she like had like three weeks worth of mist in her mouth there on Charlotte. It was ridiculous. Anyway, she rolls up Charlotte, wins. Finally, Asuka gets a win against Charlotte after WrestleMania in New Orleans, and then like the SmackDown a week or two before WrestleMania this year. Finally, Asuka is vindicated. In your final squash match of the evening, Eric Rowan takes on local talent Kyle Roberts, and Mr. Roberts commits the cardinal sin of trying to peek under the burlap to see what's going on with that cage that Rowan brings with him. Rowan snaps and destroys the local talent in seconds flat. We got a couple of backstage promos here. The first one comes from the OC. AJ Styles is an emotional wreck after losing to Rey Mysterio earlier. He's like practically a mute for some reason. He's like holding back the tears and trying to find the words after that loss. All he can muster are the words Randy Orton before he storms off. So it appears we'll be getting a renewed rivalry there between Styles and Orton. And by the way, in that promo before the four-way, AJ said, I beat you at WrestleMania this year. And that totally blew my mind again because I'm like, oh, that's right. They had a match at WrestleMania. I totally forgot about that. But then I remember Oh yeah, that's the match where the light was in everyone's eyes. Then elsewhere backstage, Lana says the company should fire Rusev over what happened to Lashley earlier in the night, but she's doing fine, thanks for asking. We then go to our main event, Seth Rollins versus Kevin Owens, and this is another great match. These guys just beat the hell out of each other here. Kevin, of course, taking some crazy bumps flying in and out of the ring. Ultimately, he hits the stunner on Rollins, looks to have things in the bag, but all of a sudden, out come AOP. They're back, and they're up in their suits again, and they are facing both the guys in the ring. Uh, Owens and Rollins, but they both start attacking Kevin Owens in the corner. So, match is thrown out, they beat down Owens, and they are getting ready to, to look at Rollins. There's kind of a stare down there, and Rollins is like, come on, let's fight. And all of a sudden, the AOP just pack up and leave. They're gone. And so Rollins looks kind of confused, hits the stomp twice on Kevin Owens for good measure as we fade to black. And that's how the show ends. So kind of interesting development here. AOP suddenly getting involved in things here makes me think that they're going to become Seth's muscle at some point, which I'm kind of excited about. Kind of like a beefed up J&J security if they drank all the ooze and became just giants instead of, you know, Joey Mercury and Jamie Noble who are so small in comparison. My final grade for this week's Raw is an A-. This is actually a really good episode of 
of Raw. I was pleasantly surprised over how well everyone brought it this week. You know, I think uh, what they're doing with Seth Rollins right now is like so good. The corporate suck up who thinks that he's, he really believes that what he's doing is for the good of the company and for the show. How come they didn't do this with him sooner? It's so cool right now. Uh, seeing Rusev finally get revenge uh, on Lashley after weeks of getting his dick kicked in and being humiliated so much. Really cathartic, really cool to see. There were a lot of squash matches on this show. I normally I'm against that, but to be fair, a lot of the squash matches did serve a greater purpose. So kind of cool to see like how the story arc worked, especially with AOP getting involved at the beginning and the end. Uh, Kevin Owens now being placed as like the top baby face in the show opposite Rollins, I think is a really cool uh, place for him to be right now. It really makes a lot of sense. So yeah, this is definitely a show that makes me want to see what's going to happen next week on Raw. But let me know what you thought about Raw in the comment section below. What do you think about Seth Rollins' new tweak with his character? Where do you think AOP is going to fit in all this in the weeks to come? I'm really curious to hear what you have to say about it. And be sure to give it a letter grade by going to the iCard in the corner of your screen. I'm Brian Zane, and I'll see you next time.